Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, dear see and viewers, when children who are living apart from their parents call their parents, the parents would first ask how their children are doing rather than talking about themselves. They try to find out if there is any health or financial problems. This is parents' heart. The heart of the Heavenly Father is much greater than this. He earnestly hopes that His children will live in peace without any worries or concerns. He also instructed us on how to live without worries or concerns. Today's scripture carries such heart of Father God. It says, Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. Those who worry about what to eat and what to drink and what to wear, I want to remind you that we are not the Gentiles. We are Christians, citizens of heaven. The Gentiles seek these things. Because we are not Gentiles, we shouldn't have such worries or concerns. For your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. If the Father knows, that's it. Once He knows, will He not supply us with all these things? Well, it depends on how you conduct yourselves before the Father. God feeds the birds in the air, clothes the grass in the field. He doesn't only know our needs, but supply all of them. And I have met and experienced this God. I was healed of various diseases and relieved of a mountain of debts. For the last 40 years since I accepted the Lord, I've never faced any disasters but lived in peace. So I always pray that you, too, may live without any worries or concerns. Our Heavenly Father knows all we need. Once He knows, He provides us. Unless we prepare our vessels, we cannot receive no matter how much He wants to give. God feeds the birds in the air and clothes the grass in the field. He doesn't only know our needs, but provides them all. I'm mad and experienced this God. As I came before God, I got healed of all kinds of diseases and relieved of the mountain of debts. For over 40 years since I accepted the Lord, I've been living in peace without any disasters. So I always pray that you too may live without any worries or concerns. With this desire in mind, I would like to talk about the secrets to living such a life. I pray in the name of the Lord that all of you may live such a blessed life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not easy to have no worries or concerns in your life. If you only have no worries or concerns, you are living a happy life. No matter how rich a person is and how much money he has, he has matters of concerns and worries. He cannot tell when he will be afflicted with the disease, an accident or disaster. He is not free from discords in the family or the feuds among brothers. It's because since the fall of Adam, the land was cursed and the life itself became suffering. I often you know, watch you know, animal documentaries. There are no animals, birds, fish, or insects that live without concerns. Food is always their number one concern. And they always live in fear of being preyed on the predators. Because a lion or a hyena or a cheetah may appear out of nowhere. They always live in fear. The same goes for in the big animals. Food is their primary concern. They also live in 
they also live in great fear of being preyed on. Say, um, a big gnu is captured. But it will not be enough for 10 lions to eat. So once they are captured, that's it. We, civilized human beings, have in the refrigerators so we can store food for a few days. But animals, if they don't eat them right away, the meat soon you know, becomes rotten and infested with bugs. They cannot store it you know, to eat later. So they always fight for... and worry about food. They fight over, you know, such things. No animals live without concerns. After close observation, I found none of them truly live in happiness. None of them live in true happiness. Since the fall of Adam, the land was cursed and the life itself became suffering. As Genesis 3.18 says, both thorns and thistles, it shall grow for you. It became difficult to make a living in the first place. Furthermore, since the land was cursed, many harmful germs or viruses emerged. People began to live in fear of sicknesses. It's not only this. People came to live in constant fears of natural disasters or accidents. All over the world, people are suffering from food or from drought. They also get you know, stricken by hail, earthquakes, volcano eruptions. There are so many. Moreover, nowadays, there are viruses and germs. that spread out rapidly. There are many kinds. So people came to live in constant fears. Poverty, disease, and disasters are the most typical worries and concerns. An old Korean saying goes, even the king cannot help the poverty. It means it's extremely difficult to eradicate poverty. Despite government's relief policies, there is hardly any country where there is no poverty. But it is possible in the kingdom of God. No nation on earth is without poor people. But in the kingdom of God, it is possible. I'll tell you that secret later. Now, how about diseases? It comes even if you don't want it, or even though you are very cautious. If you or your family members are sick, you have to live in anguish. According to statistics in Korea in 2012, if people live up to their life expectancy, two out of five men and one out of three women get cancer. One out of three women, two out of five men. It is only for cancer. What about numerous other diseases? Indeed, it's difficult to live with our hearts at ease, right? If you include other diseases than cancer, the chance of getting sick is much higher. Many people suffer from not just sicknesses caused by germs or viruses, but also from infirmities. The biblical sense of infirmity is a state where you cannot conduct normal physical activities because one or more parts of the body is paralyzed or degenerated. When I pray, infirmities go away in prayer, I mean exactly this. You may think of an infirmity as some light disease, but it's not so. It refers to a state where you cannot conduct normal physical activities because one or more parts of the body is paralyzed or degenerated. which is worse than a serious disease. So when I pray, I, infirmities go away. You shouldn't think, I have nothing to do with this because I, have a, I don't have a serious disease. y o u got to know what infirmities mean. Matthew 8, 18 differentiates infirmities from diseases, saying this was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself 
took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Disease in itself is painful, but family members also suffer mental pain, and it poses significant financial restraints. You cannot work if you are sick, and it might cause you big hospital bills. Of course, it's still fortunate if you can you know, cure your disease at an expensive price. But if you get an incurable or terminal disease, you have to suffer for the rest of your life or die earlier. Recently, there was an outbreak of Ebola and burns in South Korea. Such little viruses caused so much fear worldwide. Brothers and sisters, There are also disasters that strike us without prior notice. For example, it's difficult to avoid typhoons, earthquakes, tidal waves, or car accidents caused by another driver's fault. Even while you are driving well, your car may be crashed by another driver's fault. Such a thing is hard to avoid. Recently, there have been airplane crashes, ship sinkings, and accidents, buses, or subway trains, which caused a lot of casualties. Accidents may also happen by cars randomly, crashing into other cars or pedestrians. Other than cars, there are motorcycles racing wild on the roads. They may hit you from behind. So people are worried when they send their family members to work or to school. As I said, poverty, diseases, and disasters are the main causes of people's worries. But you Christians and God and the Lord are different from worldly people. You can live a life free of any concerns or worries. Father God told us not to have worries or concerns. Why did He tell us so? It's because He protects us, isn't it? He protects us with the heavenly host and angels. That's why He tells us not to worry. Since accepting Father God, I've never worried about such things. I don't worry about diseases. Even if I get injured by my e i g h t mistake, I don't worry because I can make it healed. immediately by prayer. I'll talk to you about the secrets to living a life free of poverty, diseases, and disasters. First, it is believing in God's Word and obeying it. So easy, right? But people don't do this because it's too easy. But if it were difficult, they still wouldn't do it, saying it's difficult. So first, you should believe in God's Word. This church has provided so many credible evidences of the existence of the Almighty God, the Creator. You've seen so many wonders, so many signs, manifestations of God's power, even the changes of aerial phenomena, not to mention the healing of diseases. Therefore, you have to believe y o u got to believe by saying these words. It is believing in God's word and obeying it. That's first. You have to obey it. Proverbs 1.3.3 says, But he who listens to me shall live securely and will be at ease from the dread of evil. Those who listen to, obey, keep the word of God will be at ease from the dread of evil. You will not fear of the dread of evil. If you are hit by a car while walking on the street or hit by a motorcycle and broke your legs, I want to remind you that you have such accidents because you fail to be protected by God. Of course, accidents may occur by your own mistakes, but even when you make a mistake, God can protect you from an accident. So if any disaster happens, It's because you are not proper before God. If you are proper before God, you can be protected even if you make a mistake. Still, we should keep ourselves from making a mistake. 
if you just obey the two most basic commandments, to keep the Sabbath day holy and to offer the whole tithe, most of your poverty, diseases and disasters will go away. How easy it is! Keep the Sabbath day holy. Keeping the Sabbath day holy is... It is so easy. Giving the whole tithe to God. In offering your tithe, you should give the whole amount. Do any of you deduct this and that and hesitate to give Him? You can just offer the whole tithe according to His word. Right? So, such a thing as you know, keeping the Sabbath day holy is never a difficult task. I kept even a difficult one back when I was a novice Christian. We had a great amount of debt, you know, accumulated while I was sick for seven years. Even though my wife and I worked hard, we could, you know, barely pay back the interest. How could we pay off the principal then? We believed that Father God would work someday. Meanwhile, well, there came an opportunity. Someone offered to pay off my debt and provide us with the re, you know, residence, but on the condition that I worked on the Sabbath twice a month. So I rejected it right away, saying, I cannot violate the Sabbath. There were places that opened doors on Sunday twice a month. So, I was asked to work on Sunday twice a month, but I said, I can't. I was rebuked by my mother for this. That's your problem. You were offered, you know, such a good position and had an opportunity to live without worries. How could you reject it? My mother? She couldn't understand me at that time. I was a novice Christian. So was she. Moreover, she was old. She didn't know about keeping the Sabbath day holy. Even though I did so, to keep the Sabbath, she couldn't understand me. So I was rebuked by my mother. The job, you know, would have enabled me to pay off my debt and brought me and my wife monthly income, but it didn't matter at all. If it made me violate the Sabbath, it didn't count me. It didn't count to me at all. It could have been very difficult for a person to reject that offer. But I resolutely refused it to keep the Sabbath. As I made such difficult decisions, one by one, I could build a trust-based relationship with the Father. As such things piled up, it reached, eventually, 100%. Trust and love between the Father and me reached 100%. If only you keep those bases, most of your poverty, diseases, and disasters will go away. When the ten plagues were inflicted upon Egypt, God protected His people, Israelites. It's the same today. If you are distinguished as God's children, you will not face poverty, diseases, and disasters, unlike worldly people. Because Father God knows all, He protects you. The least bit of evidence with which you can prove you are God's children who believe in God is that you keep the Lord's Day holy and offer the whole tithe. It's not difficult. Elder Kim De Suk, he failed to have a baby after his marriage. How many years? I think about seven years. For many years, he couldn't have a baby. Whenever his wife got pregnant, she miscarried it again and again. So he asked for my visit. You know, he lived far away, lived around Shinchon area. So as I visited him, Father God's word was, how come 
You don't keep the commandments. Keep the Sabbath. And all for the whole tithe. If you only keep the Sabbath and all for the whole tithe, the fetus can be protected. And you can give birth and raise her well. Because you fail to keep them, you cannot be protected. So I advised him, it's good to keep the Ten Commandments, but even if you cannot keep them all, you can start with keeping the Sabbath the holy and offering the whole time. If you only keep these two, she will not miscarry. You will give birth to a baby and raise her well. So the couple, you know, they kept them all. They kept them well. Even though he worked manual labor, and had to work in a local city, he made it to the Friday and Sunday services. He's never skipped the service at the central church. As they kept the Sabbath and offered the whole tithe, they gave birth to babies and raised them well. Now both of them have been married, right? I think they had two daughters. They grew up well. and successfully finished the schools. Elder Kim dae s e k has been, you know, blessed and offers quite an amount of money as tithe. So simple. It's not that they've kept only the two. You know, subsequently, you know, they must have lived by the word of God as well. But just seeing them, you know, keep these two, the father protected them from miscarrying. He allowed them to give birth to babies and raise them well. Although people testify, testify to the word of God like this, and many testimonies are being shared, many people led in the word of God through one ear and out through the other. It's a blessing to obey. The same goes for our pastors and Levi workers. If you obey, it's a blessing. God's will for us is to live a rich life, not a poor life. As our soul prospers, all things will go well with us and we enjoy good health. Did Abraham live a poor life? Did Joseph live a poor life? Was Daniel poor? Did Job, from the book of Job, did he live in poverty? The people of God are to live a rich life. No wonder they should live in blessings. There are millions of pastors worldwide. Among millions of pastors, I can proudly say that I rank first in the amount of tithe, in everything, in providing relief and in the amount of the offerings. I can proudly say this. How good is it to be blessed by the Father and to glorify Him? provide a lot of relief offered to God, store up rewards and build beautiful mansions in heaven. It's the Father's will for us. Even though it's impossible on your own, with the Father's help, you can do it. If you only keep His commandments, it will be possible. But the problem is, you don't do so. Some of you claim you've kept all the commandments well. But if so, you should have already come into Spirit and Holy Spirit. As you live by the words, you should have come into Spirit and Holy Spirit. Then, just as your soul prospers, all things should work well with you. And you would be blessed. Yet, there are so many things you fail to keep. To take Daniel prayer meeting, for example, you should not pray just the following others. but you should always pray even when no one is watching you. Regardless of you know, whether someone is watching you, it's between the Father and you. He's watching you. You've got to pray from your heart. It's not that you should do it under an obligation. It's not that you should pray only when someone is watching you. Regardless of someone watching you, or not, you should definitely pray on your own.
If you just make up your mind, it's very easy to keep the Lord's Day holy and offer the whole tithe. If you show just a little bit of faith, you don't have to worry about poverty, diseases, and disasters. How great God's love is! Those of you who have believed and obeyed the Word of God must have experienced that poverty went away within a couple of years. Say, even difficult things are resolved and you get more orders from customers. And you don't get robbed or swindled. As you live by the Word, you don't get robbed or swindled. Out of greed, you know, people make you know, reckless decisions. Then they get swindled, get deceived by lies, and do things that they shouldn't do. That's how you know, they get swindled and make things go wrong. If you walk on the right path, you will not get swindled or deceived. The Father protects you. I wish I had enough time to you know, share my own testimonies in the past, but I can't. The Father will prevent you from being deceived. But out of greed, you end up, you end up getting deceived and swindled. So you don't get robbed or swindled. You don't get stricken by diseases or face disasters. So those of you who often you know, get swindled or make things go wrong, you get deceived because of your greed. If you only walk down the right path, you will not face those things. You spend sufficiently while saving up. You don't worry about your living expenses. Since I was a new Christian, I believed the words in the Bible and practiced them. Even when I had a lot of debt and could barely pay back the interest, I offered more than one-tenth of my income as tithe. And just to keep the Lord's Day holy, I chose manual labor over a very well-paying job. As a result, I've been so blessed that I can confidently say I give the greatest amount of tithe and help the needy the most among all pastors worldwide. I offer the greatest amount of tithe among all mommy members, including those in over 10,000 brand churches. I also offer the greatest amount of construction offering. I've never lost the first place since the founding of this church. I've always won first place in the amount of construction offering, thanksgiving offerings, and also seasonal offerings. I earnestly hope that you can surpass me and take my place. If many of you offered greater amount of tithes, and if I fell to 30th place, would I feel unhappy? I'm so happy, and I'll be delighted. I'm so thankful if church members are blessed and take the highest ranks. Why should I be unhappy? I'll be delighted if someone else you know, wins the first place and receives blessings. There is no reason to feel unhappy. It's just as Malachi 3.10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. How doubtful and suspicious people are that even the Bible makes it clear the Lord of hosts said this. The Bible says the Lord of hosts said this, not just God. Once God, the Lord of hosts, promises, there is no way He breaks it. He has things fulfilled just as He spoke. It could have been written, God said this, but He says, The Lord of hosts said it. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and test me now in this, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Just as it is said, I've been blessed. Newcomers, please, don't misunderstand that I'm emphasizing on money. Even if you give more tithes, it's not that I get paid more. Why? Because I don't even get paid from the church. 
since the start of the church, I've never got paid from the church or paid for any pastoral you know, activities or church vehicle maintenance, or etc. So don't think that I'm telling you to give more money so that you know, my monthly pay will be increased. I'm saying this for your blessing. This is how I've been blessed. Not only me, but those who live by the word of God are also blessed this way. Because God's word is fulfilled without fail. So those who provide relief to many are all blessed too. I suffer from various diseases, but I, you know, but since I met the Lord and lived by the word, I've never seen a doctor or take medicine. I've never faced any disasters either. The same goes for my family. Of course, in the before and right after the start of the church, in the providence of God, my daughters were injured or became sick. But when we relied on God completely by faith, God healed them all. Father God, let me and my daughters experience such things before the start of this church, thereby in letting them grow faith. Because they are so good and obedient, even in a critical situation, they didn't complain about you know, not going to a hospital. They all overcame by faith. One Sunday, Pastor Sujin Lee collapsed with a concussion. But on Wednesday, she awoke and went to church for, you know, children's service, I guess. When I came back from, you know, fasting at the mountain prayer house, I found Pastor Myung Lee you know, covered in sore boils from head to toe. Thick scabs had formed all over her body. So whenever she moved, she bled. Especially when she bent her joints, she bled. It was terrible to see that. I figured there must have been a reason that she couldn't be protected. So I asked my wife if she did any wrong. I asked if she d skipped the uh, if she skipped the dawn prayer meeting. So she said yes. I told her to you know, repent of that. After repentance, I prayed for Myung Lee, and next morning she became perfectly clean, as if nothing had happened. It was during uh, summer break. After the, the break was over, you know, she began going to school. Also, Pastor Mi Kyung Lee, she got hit by a truck, and her mouth was, you know, in tatters inside. Her lips, you know, stuck together like this. And she had wounds here and there. But after she received my prayer, she ate porridge and went to school again. Her teacher was you know, surprised. How did you come here? My daughters went through a test of faith this way. Because they got faith, all of them passed it without difficulty. Passing the test, they greatly glorified God and grew their faith to a higher level. Those who are sick, including men of spirit who are sick under a trial, why should it take long? Why don't you show faith? From what I see, they're nothing. But they fail to show faith and make it last long. Why should you have worries and concerns? By faith, there is no need for worries or concerns. If your sickness recurs, there must be a problem, obviously. So you just have to resolve it and repent of it. Why is it so difficult? We all experience such things. Dealing with many church members, I've experienced such things numerous times. 
At one time, they were dying of poisonous gas, but they were revived by prayer. Don't think of it as a mere testimony. When you read my testimonial you know, memoir, don't just consider that as my story, but think how you o u v e reacted in such a situation. If you find yourself or your children in such a situation, how would you have shown your faith before the Father? If you could show faith like me, you know, it would be nothing. But most of you fail to do so. In the face of such situations, you are overcome by worries and concerns and try to work it out you know, according to the reality. Despite your confession, I believe, your faith is gone at such times. At times, I'm saddened by some people's confessions. Because our Father is Almighty, anything can be healed by a single prayer. Why should healing take so long? If it takes so long, there must have been a problem. There must be a problem in themselves or their family. Without their problem resolved, it will take a long time. They were perfectly healed after it was resolved, weren't they? They have to talk about this honestly. They say it took you know, half a year or a year. Is Father God incapable? If they say so, if they, I mean, it covers up the Father's glory. Take a look at those who've been healed. Those who showed faith and repented, they were healed right away after prayer. If their parents or families believed by the word, it worked right away. Otherwise, it was prolonged until they obeyed. If they at least pretend to obey, they may get healed at temporarily. Once they are healed, do they continue to obey? They again disobey. After they've healed, they again disobey. I see many such cases. Healing takes a long time for such reasons. But if they indeed repent from their hearts and display faith, it will not take that long. God will work right away. Brothers and sisters, if you just keep the Lord's Day holy and offer the whole tithe, God drives away poverty from you and protects you from diseases and disasters. But sometimes, some people get a disease or face a disaster even though they keep these two commandments. Then there must be a reason for it. God's word is always precise and correct. There is no way He will not bless you or protect you even while you obey His word. If it doesn't, it's because you are going contrary to the will of God. While you go contrary to God's will, you cannot make things go by your faith, can you? Say, in case of a serious disease like cancer, in many cases, they or their family members committed sins leading to death. Of course, there are a lot of cases where such diseases are allowed by God in special providence. More details concerning this are explained in God the Healer or other sermons. Sometimes people face hardships such as bankruptcy of their business or getting fired. If you search for spiritual reasons, in many cases, they committed evident works of the flesh that deprive of salvation. In such a case, even though you keep the Lord's Day holy or offer the whole tithe, God cannot protect you. Therefore, they must repent thoroughly and turn from sins completely. Because Father God is a love, He's given us many special chances of repentance, like December 25th, 2010 and March 31st, 2013. Sins leading to death are very grave sins. It's very difficult to repent such sins on your own. But to forgive such sins, God made me your shepherd fill up the measure of justice through sacrifice. According to the Bible, there is no forgiveness for sins leading to death. So you, ne- you cannot be forgiven of s- such sins on your own because the spirit of repentance is not given. Knowing this, I've been filling up the measure of justice on your behalf. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God always wants to bless His children and protect them. So I hope you will figure out this heart of God. 
I ask in the name of the Lord that you will not bring worries and concerns on yourself by disobeying the word of God and dwelling in sins. The second secret to living a life of peace and free of poverty, diseases, and disasters is to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. Some people keep the Lord's Day holy and give the whole tithe and they don't commit you know, grave sins, but they still live in worries and concerns. It's because they are stagnant in their growth of faith. Their faith hasn't grown to the point where they seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. If little children have grown up to become young adults and yet only ask their parents to give to them and not give back anything to their parents, they are like grown-up babies. Likewise, if you've been a Christian for a long time but still seek only physical things, it's a shameful thing. Jesus says to such people, Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. And he adds, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He promised that if we do so, God would add all these things, food, clothing, and housing, so we would lack nothing. I believed in this promise since I was a novice Christian, so I tried all my best to sow for the kingdom of God and to help the believers in need. One of the greatest joys since I was a new Christian was to give to God. As a result, I ranked first in the amount of offerings in my church. It's not because I had a great amount of income. I just believed in God's word and offered to Him with faith. As I offered to Him by faith, it gradually increased. In offering tithes, I gave more than one-tenth of my income. I even offered two-tenths. To this day, the amount of my tithe has never been decreased. It has been continually increasing. And everything. I developed, you know, conviction that what belongs to God, the Lord of hosts, is mine. I was assured what belongs to Him is mine because I built enough trust in Him. So even the impossible becomes possible and the possible more possible. Such a strong relationship based on trust and love was built. As a result of such faith, I'm ranking first in the amount of offerings, but I earnestly hope that soon many of you overtake me and surpass me. Also, it's been a long time since I worried about or prayed for my family members or physical needs. Since the early 1990s, I've told you that I don't pray for my family, for myself, or for fleshly matters. I don't pray for my daughters to be healthy. I don't pray for my health as well. Because I've committed all things to the Father. And He will take responsibility for them. Well, excuse me, my daughters. But with the Father taking responsibility, so I need no worries or concerns. Committing things to the Father is the surest way, right? Only when we commit things to the Father and let Him intervene, things work out well. Of course, I pray for the kingdom of God. However, I don't pray for my personal matters or fleshly matters. When I first offered my heart, mind, and soul, money, and time for the kingdom of God and for the souls, He supplied all my needs and those of my family members. He protected and raised my children. He not only gave financial blessings, but also protected me from diseases or disasters. I hope you will have this kind of faith and seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. By doing so, I hope that you will receive blessings of God who supplies your needs abundantly. Of course, there are some people who are physically in a very tough situation to escape from poverty. For example, there are children who are the head in their families or old people who are sick and cannot work. In such cases, I and the church will take care of them. 
Our church members are already trying hard to help those in need, like in the early churches. We got many people who zealously you know, provide relief to those in need, as in the early churches. Even though I didn't urge them, in obedience to the Word of God, many are providing relief. Those who are able, you know, help the needy. And this church is helping the needy. There are people who are, uh, who are in poor situations, so they need help. And they are being helped. Majority of this church, you know, give over a thousand as a monthly, you know, as a monthly tithe. These people are more than able to support themselves. And they also help other people. With all this, how could we not provide relief to the needy? I'm also doing it. So there is no one, no one with sickness or disasters. There, there are many disasters out in the world. But in God's protection, none of you face them. Is there anyone who had it? Well, there was one with the brain hemorrhage. But ask him. No doubt he didn't keep the Sabbath day holy or give the whole tithe. He cannot help himself because he doesn't even obey the word of God and don't show his faith. I cannot do anything about it. Neither can Father God. Because they don't obey the word no matter how many times they are taught, except in such cases. People never meet disasters, get sick, or suffer from poverty. I'm so thankful that your tithe is increasing as your faith is increasing. You are being blessed as much as you've sown. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this church, we have the power of recreation that can heal all diseases and make everything possible. There is no need to mention what will happen with that power being manifested. In other words, there is nothing impossible. Therefore, if you believe the word, obey it, and practice it, you can at least live a peaceful life free of worries and concerns about poverty, diseases, and disasters. Exodus 15.26 says, And he said, If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in His sight, in Father God's sight, and give ear to His commandments, and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases, you know, the ten plagues of the Egypt refer to all diseases and disasters on the earth, on you. None of the diseases on you, which I have put on the Egyptians, for I, the Lord, am your healer. Yes, it is the obvious truth, an absolute truth. I placed absolute trust in the Word of God and seen Him working absolutely according to it. I affirm this 100%. Of course, some of you may still have weak faith or many fleshly thoughts and worries. You may think like, when could I become more perfect? I should be on the rock and go into spirit quickly. But the 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Your sorrow leads to the salvation in the Lord. Such a sorrow is a good one, because it produces repentance, but the sorrow of the world produces death. There is no need at all to have worries, or concerns over worldly and fleshly matters. If we only see God's kingdom and His righteousness, the Father promised to give us everything. I've only sowed the Father God's kingdom and His righteousness. I'll do so today and tomorrow. I did so 10 years ago, 30 years ago, even when I was a novice Christian. So the Father has guaranteed my way So I hope that you lay down all the worldly worries and concerns before the Lord and let there be only concerns for the untruths that you haven't cast off yet and sorrow for the souls. 
May you take hold of New Jerusalem by force. That has the greatest peace and happiness. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let us pray. Father God, please let today's message become faith and life in them. Let them engrave this message in their hearts. Help them live by the word so that they will be free from poverty, diseases, any kind of germs, and disasters. Please bless them to live happily without any worries or concerns. Father, please bless them and be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Poverty, diseases, and disasters are the most typical worries and concerns. I'll talk to you about the secrets to living a life free of poverty, diseases, and disasters. First, it is believing in God's Word and obeying it. If you just obey the two most basic commandments, to keep the Sabbath day holy and to offer the whole tithe, most of your poverty, diseases, and disasters will go away. Sometimes, some people get a disease or face a disaster even though they keep these two commandments. In case of a serious disease like a cancer, in many cases, they or their family members committed sins leading to death. The second secret to living a life of peace, free of poverty, diseases, or disasters, is to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. Some people keep the Lord's Day holy and give the whole time, and they don't even commit grave sins, but they still live in worries and concerns. It's because they are stagnant in their growth of faith. Their faith hasn't grown to the point where they seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. When I first offered my heart, mind, and soul, money, and time for the kingdom of God and for the souls, He supplied all my needs and those of my family members. I hope you will all have this kind of faith and seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. By doing so, I hope you will receive blessings of God who supplies your needs abundantly. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brand churches and local sanctuaries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and internet all over the world. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues, and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them, Father, from any kind of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's disease, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from the polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes, let the deaf come to hear, and let the mute begin to speak. 
heal accidents after effects, restore their ruptured and broken bones, restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Bless them to conceive a baby. Father, please give them blessing to conceive a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their homes and business and their work with the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with heavenly hosts and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.